Ladies and gentlemen, out to Lake Oswego in Oregon we go. There is Ronnie Bennett. Hey, Ronnie. How you Hi there. How are you? How you doing? I'm getting by. I'm I, so I, I said to her, you're looking terrific, and she really is. Look at her. Um, uh, and she said, am I really? Even with you, my funny hair. You you know, know, I'm but, letting it grow just to see what would happen. But But I was just reading about you know how sick you had been in the last couple of weeks, and, and you said, do it's I look sick? It's not so much sick as in a lot of pain. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And 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 but you said to me, do I look sickly? And no, you don't. You look terrific. You know, with your Hard new for me to tell with your, with your new Mia Farrow haircut. Geez, that's terrific. oh, I'd forgotten <laughs> when she did a haircut like that. Now I remember. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I'm just letting it grow to see what will happen, and I'll figure out what to do after that. Winter will come, and I'll want hats anyway. Yeah, yeah. So you'll want hats anyway. Well, I mean, even if I didn't have a funny looking head, you know, or hair, I would want to put a hat on in the winter time. It's cold here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and uh, I got to tell you, uh, but you, you're looking, you know, you're looking as good as I've seen you in a long time here. You know, thank you for a, f uh, you. a 98, uh, 98 for a 78 year old broad. You ain't bad. <laughs> I'd look even better for a 98-year-old. <laughs> oh, you'd look terrific for a 98-year-old. I went to a wedding. You know, you, your, your thing is uh, timegoesby.net, which right. is uh, a um, uh, talks about getting older and aging and so on. This weekend, I went to a wedding of a friend of mine, Jack Garfine. Jack is 88 years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, he has a friend. He survived a concentration camp, and he has a friend who was also a friend of his in the concentration camp. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're approximately the same age because if he was too much younger, they would have killed him, okay? But he was old enough to be put on a work detail. So his friend was there, and his friend is just sprightly and aware, and everything's fine, you know? But Jack, boy, you know, it was not... It, it it was not easy getting him to the altar, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and but, but, but Alex, everybody ages at entirely different rates. Right. And whether it's physical problems, there are people at 60 who are already decrepit. And there are people in their 90s who are still driving cars or working and doing all kinds of things. So age is not a predictor of how you're aging as a Yeah, woman. yeah. But he, uh, he uh, you know, and he married, believe it or not, a 41-year-old woman. Don't think anything about that. She's a wonderful person, and uh, she truly loves him. And there's, you know, there's no money in this deal. And she just, she she wanted to get married so she would be able to take care of him as he got old, you know, as he, if he got infirmed. She wanted to be able to have some say-so about his care and so on. That's nice. That's where, nice. Where his, his children would be the only people who could do that if she wasn't married to him. So they got mm -hmm. married. And uh, it, it, was a, it was a nice wedding. But, you know, when I first met Jack, he was still walking on the beach at Fire Island. And now he couldn't walk out to the sidewalk in Fire Island. I mean, that's... And, and we've only known them two years. So it's kind of... It, 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 I'm seeing aging going on. And, of course, being 79... Remember when you were a kid, you would go, How old are you? I'm 79 and three quarters. You know? But you don't do that anymore. You always round it off to the earliest date so i'm i'm 79 till december 18th at uh, 10 10 in the morning uh, you know before <laughs> i before i say i'm 80 okay uh but i'm 80 i'm gonna be 80 and that's Little only kids always do it this way i'm five and a half <laughs> <laughs> five five and a half yeah uh but uh, you know, I, at what age did we stop doing that? I think when we got into our teens, we didn't do that any longer. Oh, I think we, when we went to school, we stopped doing that. Got yeah, much younger. Yeah. So anyway, so, um, you know, I, uh, uh, you're right about aging. People age differently because I always talk about the time I took you to your, uh, your high school reunion. And all these people were in this room, and they were all basically, if you take a, a, a date in the middle of it, on either side of it, they were like maybe six months either way. 
you know. In other mm -hmm. words, almost everybody in the room was the same age, mm -hmm. right? You don't see that very often. And I was amazed. Well, the ones who couldn't, who weren't doing so well in their old age, couldn't make it to the reunion, probably. Yeah, well, you you were at that time, I think you'd hit 50 or something like that. I don't know what the age was. But what uh, uh, amazed me was looking at the age range and looking at the, these people in this room were basically all within the same age range and how differently they all looked. How some looked very young, some looked much older than their years. And I don't know what the determination is of that. Is there something that we can do in life to make ourselves stay young? Well, do you want to? Uh, <coughs> Well, I don't know that age has gotten me anything. You know, it's not like uh, I didn't get a... Uh... But it's a given. I mean, you're born, you live, you die. To lament any part of your life, particularly mm -hmm. that it gets longer and longer, uh, what's called old age, mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's as different a part of life, time of life, as adulthood is from teen years, from young, you know, infants and so on. Yeah. It's... And we haven't ever paid much attention to it and how different it is because nobody wants to talk about old age, which I find, you know, well, I've been for 15 years, I've been writing about old age. I find it fascinating. Um, and it's a whole different time of life, which I want to enjoy or be aware of from w without pretending to be otherwise. Mm-hmm of what's really happening to me. Oh. You know, so I have cancer now and I'm having a little problem with some pain, unrelated apparently to the cancer, but to some drugs I'm taking. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's been a little bit hard for a couple of weeks. But um, it comes with old age. Things go wrong. Things go wrong. And but I never get over being interested whether it's me or you or anybody else let's talk about the, the you're talking about all the nice and wonderful things about getting old and and what i find terrible about getting older are a couple of things uh, uh one of which the most obvious of which is that we are dismissed you know it's yes. like we become men, well, we women know that more than men do we become invisible to the rest of the world well, you become invisible you guys get a few more years than women do you know before you become invisible well yes i guess so yes you do yes we do i i agree with you we do but at my age no i am dismissed okay mm -hmm. I, you know, now I, you know what we've been going through since we were 35 or 40. You know, I thought that as I got older, there would be certain positive things that would happen to me. And one of the positive things that was going to happen to me is uh, somebody would always offer me a seat on the subway. Forget it. It doesn't exist. Right? I could How be there with a walker. Last time I was in New York, I was taking the subway to go have dinner with someone. Yeah. And it wasn't particularly crowded. There were a few of us standing. And the person in front of me stood up to give me their seat. Now, I was all dressed up to go to dinner. I thought I was looking pretty good. But this looked like about a 19-year-old who <laughs> stood up and offered me a seat. So I must have looked like his great-grandmother to him. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and offered me his seat. And I was, you know, I was quite comfortable standing, but it seemed, what? almost polite more polite to say thank you and sit down than to say no thank you, you hmm. know, even though i didn't feel like i needed to sit You're right right um and it's i mean some of them are kind of amusing like that the things that happen mm -hmm. um but it's true and it's something i've been you know railing against our invisibility for as long as i've been doing the blog it's not going to change anytime soon but, you know, it, it's interesting that, that this dismissal uh, takes place earlier and earlier and earlier. I mean, I know people in, uh, in the business who are writers uh, for TV shows. You hit 40, they won't hire you. When I was first studying aging, before I started the blog, which was 15, 16 years ago, mm -hmm. and I spent five or six years just studying aging, and at that time, some research had been done that age discrimination in the workplace began for men at 40 
and for women at 45. Not any specific industry like you're talking about. Yeah. Just in general, on average. Hmm. That young, it begins to start. What I don't think is that at 35 or 40, you're just getting good at what you do. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I, I, somebody once said to me, they, uh, when Eric Clapton first came out, they said, oh, he's terrific. And I said, well, I guess he is, but I'd like to hear him about, oh, I don't know, 20 years from now and see how much he's improved because of all the virtuosity he has gained. And, and that's what you gain, especially in your field and my fa field, is virtuosity. In any field, you get better at what now, you do one I, way or another. I'm lucky that I lasted till I was like, 73, 74. Uh, I always thought business. you would at last on radio until you wanted to quit or drop dead because nobody can see you, so they can't. And you don't have, Doesn't, you know, your voice you is know, still you, vibrant. You know who can see you? The people you're working for. Right, exactly. And yes. that's the problem. You know, I mean, I know that age had something to do with my dismissal because when I was dismissed, they said to me, "I have to before we give you your uh, what do you call it? Your uh, uh, what's final the, check? Uh, uh, the the money they give you for about sixteen weeks, you know, uh, severance, severance pay. pay, severance pay. Before we give you the severance, you have to sign this disclaimer that you won't sue us for age discrimination." Oh. And I said, uh, "Otherwise, we won't give you the money." And I said to them, "Well, to begin with." That's you, you, legal. I said, do you realize that what you just asked me to do is age discrimination? Because you're also firing my producer, who is Albert Reynoso, who happens to be, at the, I think he was still in his 40s at the time, late 40s at the time. I said, you didn't say, say this to him, did you? Well, we, uh, we just want you to sign this, blah, 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 blah. And I went, Wow. You know, that, this is age discrimination if there ever was that. I said, I'll sign it because if I want to take you to court, I'll win because just making for saying, probably hold. Probably not. No. Pro say, no saying, the way the laws have been changed, probably wouldn't. Well, this was several years ago. And he, I said, you know, I thought to myself, you know, if I wanted to sue them for age discrimination, the fact that they are holding up money for me, which I, severance is something that I'm owed, okay, by the company rules and regulations, you know. So uh, since I'm owed that, uh, I think and that... We, well, neither of us are lawyers. Let's not go Well, anyway, the it. point was... That you was, don't know that, that and neither that was do real, That was really a case of age discrimination. Saying, well, it you know, looks like it on the surface. According to law, it may not be because they've weakened the law over the years again and again and again. Wow. Wow. No. So, you know. I'll ask you about something entirely different. Sure, go ahead. Why not? What's your take on the Jeffrey Epstein death? Well, I, there's a six, you know, the six degrees of separation that you could take somebody who knew Epstein and then you could take somebody else and somebody else and somebody else till you find out where in that state of separation you fit. No, no, uh, I am, no, 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 I am, I'm not asking where I am you one fit. degree. I, don't care. I, I am one. I care what you uh, think about Hold his on death. A I'm one step removed from Jeffrey Epstein. We don't care. Uh, well, we care what you think about his death. Uh, I think uh, about his death. Uh, I think everybody's making too big a deal out of it because aren't they glad he's dead? You know, I mean, I, that's not what I mean at all. Do I think that there was a plot to kill? I think somebody done him in. I think it's obvious. No question. I don't. I don't know about that. You know, I really don't. I'm Come on. This morning they they have a different story every day. This morning the story was this is Wednesday the 14th. There'll be another one tomorrow. Um was that two qualified guards were asleep for 3 hours, both of them, while he committed suicide. Hmm. Well, that's just today's story. There was a different one yesterday. I, you know, I don't know that anybody needed to have him killed. You know, of course, Trump is saying it's the Clintons. No, <laughs> that. That, that's yeah. stupid. Yeah, I know. But um, you don't think so? You don't think all of the famous names in his little black book or however he kept them? 
But how are they all going to get together, you know, to conceive a they little plot to, to kill him? They don't have to all get him? together. Just one of them is what you're saying. Yes. I don't, I really don't think that was the case. I don't know why I don't think it, but... Um, well, think it through. I mean, why do you, why well, do you... The one degree of separation... Just make it up. The, the one, must the, be a the one, the one degree of separation that I have is my friend Bobby Slayton, who's a comedian. Whenever he would come to New York, he'd say, well, I'm staying at this friend's apartment house where he has an apartment that he lets people stay when they come to town who he likes and he says he's a fan of mine and he puts me up and he introduced him to Woody Allen and so on turns out it was Epstein and so I've I've asked him about Epstein and uh, he said you would have never known that was going on he said he liked young women but not children not girls he liked young women I always saw him with younger women but well, the, once, a week, once a year when he came to town no, no, no. He would come here two, three times a year. Yeah, two or three yeah. times a year when he came to town, he knows that? Well, I mean, he said by his observation, you know. Uh, but there was something he mentioned to me the other day, that the thing about Epstein that nobody knows, because they've never made a big deal out of it, because they have got him on this other stuff, that he was involved in Ponzi schemes, and people have been convicted of Ponzi schemes and being associated in dealing with them and having his own Ponzi schemes going. We know that, though. We know that about yeah. him. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, th this guy was a lowlife, okay? He was an ingratiating... A rich lowlife. <laughs> no, no, he was an ingratiating lowlife. In other words, he would always ingratiate himself <laughs> to famous yeah. people, you know, um, to famous people. Uh, but but he was a lowlife nonetheless, and... and uh, uh, you know, he he would go in and ingratiate himself. I mean, people go, well, Donald Trump, look, there's a picture of him with Epstein. Yeah, but that's Epstein. He, Epstein would seek out Donald Trump, you know. Uh, he would seek out Prince uh, Edward, is it, who supposedly? Andrew. 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 And Prince Andrew. I mean, this was the kind of guy he was. Um, and he, you know, it's the old joke in, a, about, a, about guys in Hollywood. There are people down there who haven't used people yet. You know, I mean, he used everybody. That was his. That was his thing. Who knows if he had that much money in reality? You know, he could have been. I, that, that, I'm only. I'm only curious about the mystery of his death. The rest of it, I don't much care mm -hmm. about. But, yeah. Um, except he shouldn't go around doing things like that with little girls. I. I. I, I think whatever they did uh, there at the jail was irresponsible. Uh, certainly, if the guy, they thought the guy attempted suicide two weeks early, you don't exactly take him off suicide watch. You know, I mean, what was that about? What was it about? And that, if he hanged himself, I want to know what he hanged himself from. Well, that is, well, you've got a point there. I thought about that myself. You know, you're in a cell. You've got a blanket. You can strangle yourself with that. And there's a bunk bed. We all know how tall bunk beds are. Y yeah, a bunk bed wouldn't do it. Uh, they no. don't have any curtain rods there. Bars? And they don't put curtains in jail cells. <laughs> they don't have bars. No. You know, so, um, I, you know, uh, quite frankly, you're making me suspicious now. <laughs> I mean, I can't wait to see what tomorrow's story is. Yeah, well, you know, but what what gets me is is how everybody's so upset he's dead. Well, uh, you know, I mean, come on, this is a guy everybody wished dead, okay? And then when he dies, they go, "How dare he?" I mean, I could see that he committed suicide because if I were in that situation, I probably would too. If you knew that you were going to spend the rest of your life behind bars, there was no way you were getting out of this one, okay? And that there was only more and more and more coming out every day. Um, uh, the fact that he took his life is not out of question. Out of the we question. don't know that he did. Yeah. But uh, uh, I mean, what a you know, uh, what, what he became. It's interesting in this time of a lot of stories happening. He became the object of most talk. I mean, Trump must have hated him because it took Trump off the front page for a couple of days. You know. When I woke up, what was it, Saturday morning? He was found dead sometime during the night, I mm -hmm, think. And mm -hmm. it was Saturday morning we heard yeah, about it. Yeah. Back up a number of years, and maybe several, de well, obviously several decades. In those days, I woke up to the radio would click on to get me up to go to work. Mm -hmm. 
and usually it clicked on if I was still asleep. It clicked on in the middle of someone's sentence. You know, you didn't know what they were talking about yet. Right, right. But one morning, lo, those many decades ago, the radio clicked on, woke me up, and said, John Lennon was shot dead last night. I mean, mm -hmm. a full sentence. Yeah. I had never heard a full yeah. sentence. Yeah. And the same thing happened when I turned on the television to see what's happened overnight with my coffee <laughs> when the audio came on. Jeffrey Epstein was found dead in his cell yesterday. And those are the only two times in my life that I got a whole sentence when I turned on or the radio came oh, on. Oh, wow. 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 <laughs> How'd you feel when you heard that John was dead? Because we knew John. Yeah. I mean, that was terribly sad. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. Um, you know, and in those days, I had been in touch with Yoko, not John. Mm-hmm. And um, and and it wasn't like they were friends. We occasionally had dinner or drinks with them. I did. We didn't know them all that well. Yeah. Um, acquaintances, you could call them. Acquaintances. And yeah. uh, um, you know, a couple times a year, maybe we would see them. Um, it, it was just. A, it, it's always shocking when young people die unnecessarily. Whether it's an auto accident or someone killing them, or, and you know whatever. Yeah. Um. And and what was he? Only around forty. I mean, we were, we were all young and, you know, carefree and uh, not maybe not so carefree in those days, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. And it was so it was doubly shocking. I mean, if someone my age dies, mm -hmm. whether by misadventure or just old age, it's not unexpected. It's not a big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is when you're 40 and it was, it was, it, and he was such a part of the, uh, of the culture of that moment in time of those years. Well, you know what he represented was, it, it represented four people who were a part of our lives and who defined a time in our lives. And now one of those people is gone and they will never get back together again. There was never that hope. You know, that, that, that his death made a little part of us die. Uh, and, and A little part of that moment in time that we lived through that was yeah. culturally quite different from what came before and what came after. Yeah. But it was kind of a mark almost of an end of a of an era, mm -hmm. I think. I didn't know that at the time. I, I'm just saying that only in hindsight. Right, right. Um, and and I think that's always true of people who die young, who are part of the, part of our our life, whether we know them or not. I mean, it's you know somebody that stars in a TV show you've been watching for ten years, you know, or something. Um, Do you realize there are twenty year olds you could talk to today? Go, who is John Lennon? You know, that's very interesting, as I hear often from older people my age, thereabouts, that their grandchildren listen to the Beatles and love them. Mm -hmm. Isn't oh, that okay. interesting? That I is mean, interesting, yeah. That's from 50 years ago now. But, you know, most of the time I find I'm making references to people that I think are contemporary enough, and it turns out that the, you know, the 18-year-old sitting there goes, who, who are you talking about? Right. You know, who and are you that's, talking about? And that's fine. I'm quite sure that our parents said that about the musicians or other heroes that we had. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that's that's yet another thing about what we where we started out today, and that is that uh, uh, your definition of of your life and the people things that defined your life uh, to other people never existed to them. Because they didn't, they didn't, they weren't there for it. And again, know? reverse it as I just did. Yeah. It's true of your parents' generation and the mm -hmm. generation before that. I mean, we didn't have the media prior to our parents' generation that we have today. So um, our heroes, the people we admired or enjoyed, weren't probably as widespread yeah. in our parents' day and before than, as they are now. Wow. When we can just flip on our computers and see anything that's going on in the world. Wow. Yeah. But, um, but that's, you know, 
that's as it should be. The world changes. Our generation changed some things in the world that got inherited by the next generation. Right. And so on, and it will keep going that way if we don't climate change ourselves out of existence. And we've uh, we've uh, kind of uh, talked ourselves out of existence for this 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Always great talking to you, you know, and and you do look very very healthy today. So Thank I want I want to say that just so you, you know that, ladies and gentlemen, it's Ronnie Bennett. Time goes by. Dot net is her blog, and if you want to find out what it's like to get older, and you're not older yet, you should find out what it's like to get older. So when you get there, you're prepared. Thanks, Ronnie. <laughs> and it'll be entirely different for younger people than for us. Thank you, Ronnie. Bye -bye. Okay, talk to you soon.